Previously on General Hospital. I would like to thank the Castine family. You're not acting yourself. Are you all right? Fine. You're not going to try and kill me tonight, are you? There's always next week. Let me come and sit with us. We can exchange war stories. Fine. Maybe for a moment. Sonny, I mean, I thought he was gone for good. It's okay. Doc, have Luke. you seen Lucy? She's not in her room. I don't think so. She said something about checking on the kitchen. The kitchen? What's she checking on in there? I don't know. Unless it says Beluga, she wouldn't know what it was. <laughs> Maybe she got lost. Just breathe. I was dying. I was dying. I'd say you were close. Lucy, what happened? I put my dress on. This dress for the next introduction. And all of a sudden it began crushing me. I couldn't breathe. Doc, it was just like in your book. I couldn't breathe. It crushed me. I was gone. Yeah, you were on your way to that great charity ball in the sky, babe. All right, take it easy. Settle down. Now your pulse is coming back to normal. You feel better? Help me get her off on the couch. Yeah. Okay. Deep breath. Any idea who tried to take you out? Eve. Eve Lambert. You know she's been after me for weeks and weeks. I'm going to have her heart in my cereal bowl for this. Well, the police commissioner is out there. We'll take it to him. Oh, my God, Lucy. What happened? Eve, come on. Don't pretend. And you know exactly what happened to me. Looks like your raffle ticket got you a trip up the river, little lady. Hey, see me? Uh, last time I saw her, she was with Lucy. Hmm. What is wrong with this picture? Is my tie crooked? <laughs> no, you're not old enough to have a doctor daughter. Well, I, I, I can't deny this kid even uh, for a compliment from a pretty girl. You're lucky to have such a proud father. I wish Neil could be close to his dad. If you'll excuse me, I'd better go talk to my son. Aren't you scared to sing in front of all these people? No, I practiced a lot. Hey, you two, you having fun? Yeah. Good. Neil, uh, when Dr. Joe sits down, I'd like for you to go sit next to him so he can keep an eye on you and make sure you don't overdo it, all right? But we were watching that stage. Can't they stay with Serena? I promise I'll go to Dr. Joe if I start feeling tired. Okay, yeah, all right. Go have fun. But don't touch anything, okay? We won't. Mom, he rock. <laughs> okay, have fun and be careful, please. All right, I love you. Bye, sweetie. Bye. I guess that's good. Good evening. I uh, don't think we have met. Oh, Victor. This is Mike Corbin, Victor Collins, Kevin's father. Mike, nice to meet you. You too. Forgive my interrupting, but Mary, uh, I want to buy some raffle tickets. You're my lucky charm. <laughs> well, once a lucky charm, always a lucky charm. Gotta go. Excuse us. 
See ya. <laughs> what are you doing? Making sure the eyes boring through us didn't leave any holes. Oh, stop. Just because some lower life form decided to take pictures of a private moment between us and make them public, that doesn't in any way change the fact that I am delighted to be out with you tonight. Even if dating your once supervisor may cause you to lose a quarter million award. You're worth more to me than that prize. Come on, heads up. Mm. Being teacher's pet's gonna cost Matt the quarter million tonight. It's like his loss is my gain. You know, your arrogance never ceases to amaze me, Chris. You haven't won anything yet. The operative word there being yet. Doctors, doctors, try to look like you're having fun. We were just uh, discussing the Quartermain and how some people think that they have it locked up. Well, the committee is notoriously elusive, so don't count those chickens. <laughs> it's good to see you back in town, Dr. Borman. Wouldn't feel right having the Quartermain awarded without you here. Well, thanks, Chris. I'm anxious to get back to work. Obviously, that's the last thing in the mind of some doctors on this staff. You know, Matt and Ellen are entitled to a personal life. I mean, the best doctors balance their work with a healthy home life. I mean, isn't that what our goal is supposed to be? Well, here's my take. Getting involved with a subordinate is an appalling lack of judgment. I have to agree. Mm, it was rather unprofessional. And to think that I gave Harmon a start in the OR. Mm. Oh, right, Dr. Boardman. It was really generous of you to let him save your life after Cooper attacked you. Excuse me. Having a good time yet? Sure. Haven't been tarred or feathered yet. <laughs> Mr. Baldwin, may I speak to you a minute? Dr. Devlin, don't you look lovely tonight? Thank you. I realize this may not be the appropriate time or place, but I was wondering if you would defend me against this murder charge. Isn't Scotty defending you? Not anymore. Well, I'll have to discuss it with my son first. Before we proceed, excuse me. <laughs> hey, Lee. Julie Devlin just asked me to represent her. Now. Why did you two part up? Ah, uh, I was um, sitting on some evidence that uh, could have helped her case. You were withholding evidence in, in, in a murder investigation? What are you trying to do, get yourself disbarred again? Well, I'll tell you something. If I had to do it all over again, I would do the same thing. What possesses you to do this? Hey, Scott. Jake? Eve's backstage. She was asking to see you. Okay. See you. I don't have to take your paranoid abuse. Eve, did you help Lucy into that dress? No! No, I was right. You didn't help me tonight. You tried to kill me. I wish. Too bad whoever it was botched the job. Ooh, partner, you heard it. That's a confession. If I ever heard oh, one, you heard it. Uh, all right, all right, Lucy. Look. Eve, I don't know you from Adam, but I'll tell you this. If you are responsible for that incredible shrinking dress, your little butt is going to jail. You can't accuse people without evidence. Oh, Doc, whose side are you on? I almost lost my life Which is here. why I want the police to investigate before the killer can get away. Well, Evie is not getting away with Jack this time. Look, Max out front. Let's let him handle it, shall we? Get your hands off of me. Hey, don't ever touch her, okay, Spencer? You again. Every time Lucy's life is in danger, you're hanging over her shoulder like the Grim Reaper. Hey, you know, I heard Laura was back in town. Your kids asking me questions. Why don't you just go home and take care of your little family? My little family is none of your damn business. Yeah, okay, whatever. This is all very fascinating, but I am out of here. Scott, let's go. Okay. No, you are not going yes, anywhere. Yes, she you is, and so are you. I'm taking you home but right now. I am not going anywhere. I have a show to do. Do you have any sense at all? Kevin's right. Somebody tried to kill you. Now get the hell out of here. I am not leaving because I'm safe now because your plan fizzled, didn't it? So I'm going to be fine. Nothing else is going to happen. And Luke... I really appreciate you riding oh. to my rescue. I know you didn't really want to be at the nurse's ball this year at all, so I really appreciate it, and I think we can handle it from here on out. You're sure now? There's a lot of riffraff hanging around. True, very true, but I'm positive. Okay, well, Luke, that thank you's from both of us. Ah, forget it. And, Luce, uh, next time you need any help or when you just want to hang out in your underwear, give me a call. Okay. Thank What's going on? This person tried to kill me. No, your dress tried to kill you. Well, Lucy, where is this dress? It's in my dressing room, thank God, ripped to shreds. In my book, the killer used a chemical called low urine to get the fabric to contract. You may want to test for that. I'll do that. 
Eve, you were Lucy's dresser for the nurse's ball. Where were you when all this was going on? She was with me. I dragged her away. Scott, Eve was with you the whole time, just like you never lied about anything, about anything connected to this investigation at all, right? Oh, will you just can it? No, I will not can it. This, this person tried to shrink wrap me in my very own dress. I want, I want her arrested. Lucy, Lucia, arrest her. Lucy, Lucy, I don't have enough evidence to make an arrest. Oh. I have to go change into my next outfit. Shrinking dresses, Lucy. Scott! world has gone completely wacky, hasn't it? She gets to just waltz out of here after what she's done? Uh, okay. Never mind. I will just deal with Eve later. I have to get ready for my next introduction. What? Lucy, someone just tried to kill you. Do you really want to let him have another crack at it? Doc, look, Eve's not going to try anything else tonight. Somehow this evening I've managed to get out of my dress not once but twice so the chances are pretty nil that i'm going to end up center stage unclad this year so oh doc it's okay i'm safe i'm gonna stay safe so let's just finish the show so where were you when lucy was being squeezed to death? i was by myself waiting in the wings so scott i heard you bailed out eve a second time what a guy too bad you're such a lousy lawyer. Hey. Julie, you gotta get your facts straight before you go make enough fool out of yourself. No, you two were the foolish ones to think you could get away with murder. If the police don't press charges against you, I will sue you in civil court for the wrongful death of my father. Well, I would rather be in prison than sit here and listen to your whining. Somebody ought to put you out of your misery. <gasps> oh, please. Stop oh, it, you two please. idiots. Stop it. You have a show to do. Now, listen, I want you to make this number good, so stop fighting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, friendship and laughter are very important medicine in the fight against AIDS. And here to make that case is the very lovely and intelligent Dr. Julie Devlin, who's managed to overcome tragedy with great dignity. And to help her out, someone you probably all know, some of you very well, Dr. Eve Lambert, who's a woman of many talents. Some are medical. Well, Eve and Julie.
tonight. Yeah, great. I just ripped a dress off Lucy. <laughs> yeah, there's a thought shared by many men in this room tonight. This dress was a sort of a psycho death shroud. I mean, like in the book. Mm -hmm. Is she all right? I guess. Uh, the cops are involved now, so I'm off duty. <sighs> you didn't know Sonny was going to be here, did you? Did you? Well, he's one of your best friends, didn't that bother you? Not a bit. I'm not his father. Whatever that means. My son doesn't seem to think I... I need to know whether he's dead or alive. Well, sons are like that sometimes. Well, hello again, everybody. Wasn't that fun? And do not go away because there is plenty more where that came from. Now, I am very, very excited because this is the moment our interns have been waiting for since they came here a year ago. After intermission, Dr. Monica Quartermain is going to announce the winner of the prestigious Quartermain Residency Award. So hold on to your hats and good luck to all of you. Thanks. <laughs> guy's from Lance Pharmaceuticals. No, no, you're wrong. Listen up, she's about to announce the winner. It was you. You, you're the one who stole my research. Stuff a sock in it, you. Ah, oh, welcome back, everyone. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. It is with great honor and pleasure I introduce the woman standing next to me. She is not only a noted philanthropist, but a wonderful humanitarian and she also happens to be chief of cardiology and she also happens to be from personal experience i'll tell you one tough cookie <laughs> she also is very proud to be a member of the quartermain family and this award was named after her wonderful family and ladies and gentlemen i give you dr monica quartermain thank you it's always a pleasure to be a part of the annual nurses ball this year, I'm particularly honored to be presenting the Quartermain Residency. This award is meant to encourage young doctors in the pursuit of excellence. It includes a position as surgical resident. It also includes a $50,000 stipend. It is my family's and hospital's hope that the recipient of this award become a trailblazer in the ever-changing world of medicine. This has been a really tough year to choose among the interns. It was an excellent group, really outstanding. But we had to pick one, so the quarter main residency will go to Dr. Christopher Ramsey. What a year. <laughs> um, first, I'd like to uh, thank the Quartermain family for making this award possible. I'd also like to thank my fellow interns for their support. And, well, I couldn't leave here tonight without a special thanks to Dr. Ellen Burgess. Without her hands-on guidance, I couldn't have walked away with this award tonight. I thank you all very, very much. You won it, Matt, and they took it away from you. Somebody went to a lot of trouble to make certain that happened. Hey, hey, champagne all around. What a joke. How to take that award, Ramsey, and shove it down your throat. Hey, Jake, never pegged you for a sore loser. Ramsey, you're a cheat and a liar, and I'm going to prove it to everybody.
The nurse's ball will continue today on General Hospital. This is Lisa McCree. And Kevin Newman. Tomorrow, designer Cynthia Rowley on what your shoes say about you. And Reggie Jackson, Tommy Lasorda, and Michael Milken on what you need to know about prostate cancer tomorrow on Good Morning America. The nurse's ball continues today on General Hospital. Visit abc.com for a sneak peek ahead.